Welcome. Sustainability is an important issue for the maritime industry. As you can see in this image, a lot of emissions could be attributed to shipping. The EEXI, the EEOI, and the CII are all related to sustainability and will be discussed further within this presentation. We'll start with the discussion of the legislation, which all come into force in 2023, the application of EEOI, the application of CII, and what it means for the year report of the maritime business game and what you need to take into account for it. 2023 is a new start for shipping. In this year, a lot of legislation is becoming effective with, re with regards to sustainability. Ships will now need to comply with the EEXI from the first obligatory survey in 2023 for all ships above 400 GT. This is a design related matter. And so if you do not pass the EEXI measure, you are forced to adopt improvements with your next survey so 2023 is a new start for shipping. A lot of sustainability measures are coming into force in 2023. First of all, the EEXI, the Energy Efficiency Existing Ship Index. This is related to the EEDI, the Energy Efficiency Design Index for new ships, which is already in, in force for a longer period. This EEXI is obligatory for all ships with their first survey after 2023. Ships are only for ships above 400 GT. It's design related, which means that you have to update improvements into the vessel if you do not meet the required EEXI values. Furthermore, there is also the EEOI, the Energy Efficiency Operational Index. This is a slightly different measure and it's recommended only right now, but it does not look at the design, it does look at the operation of the vessel. So in essence, the one looks at what the ship is designed to do, the other one looks at how the ship has been used and if that impact is large or small. Then there is a third measure, which is basically in between these two, which is the CII, the Carbon Intensity Indicator. And this one is obligatory for the 1st of January 2023. And as it's also an operational index, it means you have to report it every year. The operational index is calculated each year and then you compare it to a minimum line and see how well you are uh, in relation to that line. If you are on the bad side of that line, of course, you need to improve. So even penalties are possible with this rating. So we'll start with the EXI. The EXI, is the, uh, as you remember, is the design related index. It's a calculation for ships over 400 gross tonnage. And in this case, because we're looking at the business game, we look at the conformity of 10K and above for the bulk carriers. Basically, uh, the, the, the idea of what the EEXI is that your attained EEXI needs to be below the required EEXI. As you can see on the right in the graph, you get the, there is a line going for the EEXI uh, required, which is slowing, which is going down for bigger ships. And this has to do with the fact that the EXI, like the EEDI, is related to a gram per ton miles. And a larger ship is more effective and has a lower gram per ton miles because it's tr more transport efficient. So this is why the line is showing a curve. And it means that all ships uh, above that line will need to move and make adjustments to move below this line. There is, of course, a limit, which you also can see on the right hand side, that if you are below 10K to 10,000 dead weight, that means that your ship is not obligatory to change. So the attained EEXI, which is the same formula as the EEDI you might be familiar with, relates a carbon intensity, CF, with the specific fuel consumption, the power of the main engine, the specific fuel consumption, and the power of the auxiliary engines and basically looks at what you emit per hour and divides that by the dead weight carrying capacity. So the transport capacity, the transport load of the vessel and the reference speed. And the reference speed is a 75% maximum continuous rating of this engine. So this gives you a, on an hourly basis, a division which will result in the gram per ton miles. In the business game, we can replace these measures because we know the direct consumption, which is actually what you're trying to calculate if you multiply the specific fuel consumption times the engine power. So we have the consumption at the reference speed, 
which the reference speed was at 75% maximum continuous rating, which in this case means you have 75% of the design consumption here. And we have the consumption of the auxiliary engine or the, house, uh, the consumption for the hotel load as presented in the business game. This is divided by dead weight, straightforward from the business game, and the V ref. Then the V reference, the reference speed is the speed at 75% consumption, which means take another look at the voyage calculations to find out how to calculate the V reference. Then the required EEDI is a line which shows, so, so and then the, for, and that value you need to compare to the required EEDI. So the, the required EEDI is a curved line which is given by the last part of the formula on this, uh, the first formula on this sheet, which is the 9 of the 61.79 times the dead weight to the power of minus 0 0.477. This is the curved line. However, for each type of bulk carrier, there is an additional reduction towards this line required. As you can see again on the right, there is an X given for each bulk carrier. So below 10,000 dead weight, there is 0% and that will not change because below 10,000 dead weight, you do not have to apply the EDI line and you don't have to fit with the requirements. So there's no need to reduce this value. Then between 10 and 20,000 dead weight, this line will go for a reduction between zero and 20%. And as you can see in this line, this is linear. So that means that at 10, you have zero and at 20, you have 20% difference. At 15, you have 10% below the line. Then after that, for 20 to 200,000, the reduction is 20%. And when you are above 200,000, only 50% reduction is required. So in essence, there is a reduction from the baseline on top of this. And this reduction can change, of course, over time and with new legislation. Also, furthermore, it's important to notice that if your dead weight is above 279,000 dead weights, which of course is not that common, there's only a few ships that are bigger than that. That means that you have the same, you, you keep the dead weight at a level and that means also basically that the line will go horizontal at that situation. Then the EEOI, the Energy Efficiency Operational Index looks a lot like the EEXI, but is slightly different. In this case, you are really looking at your consumption and at the distances you sailed with cargo. So what you can see in the formula here is the same carbon factor because you're still looking at the fuel, but you take the sum of the consumption of all the trips. So basically if your trip was empty or full, it doesn't matter. You need to take the consumption of all trips together. And you divide it by the distance of each trip times the cargo transported for each trip. And this multiplication is what you sum. So if you were having a ballast trip, that distance is basically not added because the ballast was a zero ton transport. So that means that in this case, you only count the distances times the loaded cargo, and then you add this multiplication, you add together. So don't add all the distances and all the cargos and then multiply them because that number will be a lot bigger. You need to multiply them first and then add them. At this point, there is no reference value, but this gives you a clear indication of how effective your transport operations were and how effective you were in transporting a certain cargo amount over the, over the globe, including your relocation work. The, e, uh, the CII rating is basically in between the EXI and the EOI, as I said before. This is because you are looking at the actual consumption of the vessel per year, but you are not taking into account the actual transportation provided. So the CII rating, uh, which is only required for vessels over 5,000 tons dead weight and voluntary for the data below. And of course, for the business game, you volunteer even if you have a vessel of below 5,000 tons dead weight. So the CII rating, as you can see in the calculation, uses the sum of your actual consumption over the year. It also has the carbon factor again, of course, and then divides this by the dead weight of your vessel and the sum of the distances you traveled. And in this case, also the ballast strips are seen as a useful distance, or at least as a distance to which you need to divide it. So it takes a slightly different approach uh, in that sense. So it sums all the distances below the line. It 
multiplies this by the dead weight, and then there is a factor F ice, which is explained below, which is basically showing you that if an ice, if you have an ice class vessel, you get an extra bonus, small extra bonus, because those vessels are heavier uh, and thus need to be compensated for that extra fuel consumption. Now, if we look at the uh, above the line, then we can see that we're adding the consumption and this is all the consumption so basically you look at the total consumption of your vessel so that includes hotel load as well as the, the vessel for uh, the, the consumption for your fuel and then you are allowed to deduct 75 percent times the consumption of your hotel load your auxiliary engine consumption which is the hotel consumption however you see another factor behind these brackets which is 0 0.03 times yi now, if you look at the explanation of YI, you see that YI is increasing with every year. So it's a number roll for every year. In 2023, it's still zero. In 2025, it will be two. In 2033, it will be 10. And it will be increasing up until it's at, the, uh, at 25. So that means in 2048, you have no reduction anymore of the auxiliary engine consumption. So what is intended with this measure is that right now it's important to focus on your actual on your operational consumption. So the consumptions that you have because you are sailing across the globe and you are moving cargo. However, over time, the importance of the of including in this the hotel load consumption is increasing. So by having a factor that is becoming smaller and smaller for the deduction means that over time you do have to take a look not only at your engine for the propulsion but also at what energy you use for the hotel load so your hvac the lighting the heating all, all the kind of things that are happening in your accommodation and are necessary for either pumping up cargoes for example all those kind of consumptions you need to take into account and also start reducing that of course, in the beginning, it's not that important, but later on, it will become more and more and more important. As you can see here, the CII required rating is very similar in setup as that of the EEXI. So also in this case, you have a reducing measure, which is reducing with the size of the ship. Um, and that means that you have, in this case, 4,745 times the dead weight to the power of minus 0.622. So it's also a declining measure. And there is another factor in front of it, one minus Z, which means that there is an extra reduction required. And this extra reduction is basically for the number of uh, for a number of years already determined, but in the future can be determined further by the legislation. And you need to reduce about 2% extra in every year. So that means that over time, your CII will be going down. Right now it's supposed to be roughly equal with the EEXI, and then it will be going further down over time so that in the future, you will have to comply with more strict measures. As you can see on the right-hand side in the image, there are five categories. So the categories are major superior, minor superior, moderate, minor inferior, and inferior. And as you can see, you need to get, again be below the line to be major superior. A major superior for dry dock carriers means that you need to be below 0 0.86 times the required CII. So if your E, your CII is less than 68% of the required CII, you are major superior. Then in between that and 94%, you are minor superior, which means that in a couple of years, you'll probably be moderate, which is the next level. So the moderate level is between 6% uh, between above or below the required CII. Then we have minor inferior. So that is, you are not performing as you should be. The average of the fleet or the desired average of the fleet is not what you're achieving. And that is between 6% and 80% over the required CII. No, no action is required, but depending on where you are in that range, in the future that could be required because of this one minus that factor in the function. And then the last one is inferior. And inferior basically means that you're above 80% on top of the accepted or the required CII. In this case, action is required for all vessels above 5,000 dead weight. And you have to come up with a plan on how to address this. This can be an installation. This can also be a change in operation. 
if for multiple years after each other you are exceeding this uh, level and you have an inferior rating, you might also get penalized. What do I expect from you in the year report? The question you probably all be waiting for. So clearly show your EEXI, your EEOI, and your CII calculations. All three of them are not that big. They require the same input. So combine that input and show me how you get these values, how you come to these numbers, so that I can check your calculations, as these are important calculations to master into the future. You can mix the data that you present with, for example, the trip overviews or the market assessments to save space. So you can use one table where you show the input for the EEXI, the EOI, the CII, but also how your trips were going, the profits, uh, the car cargo utilization, all those kind of information you can combine in single overviews. Then discuss your situation. And also in this discussion, take a look at the difference in values and, and how you can explain this and why, for example, in one value, you might be uh, good enough. And in the other value, you are very, badly performing so uh, explain to me what, what what is behind this and if in the future you see any changes coming up and how fast you actually need to take action for your vessel this is also something i'd like to see back of course in your future outlook so if there is actions required now or in the future discuss them in your future outlook and basically, you will get roughly a page for, for this application, for this information. That should be more than enough to, uh, to hand this into the year report, which means the total of the year report will be 11 pages. So thank you for your attention. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I wish you all the best of luck with creating your year report based on the results of the business plan.